welcome back to the fourth video in the scripting series now in the previous video we used what we'd learnt uh, throughout the series so far to create a quick little dice game uh, where you could roll dice and uh, get a get a number but uh, today we're going to be learning about variables now i did touch upon that uh, in the previous video very very briefly uh, but we're going to go deeper on what variables are in roblox scripting so let me give you an example first before i tell you how they work so we've got our dice game here okay and uh, each time that we want to change a property of uh, of the dice we have to say game.workspace.dice1 okay now if we had our dice and they were inside a folder uh, sorry if they were inside a model if we group them together and we named this model dice and then maybe if it was in another model called game parts okay you would see that in order to reference the dice we would have to say game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice and then dice one okay uh, game parts dice dice one okay yep just making sure i got that right so you'd have to say that every time that you wanted to change a property or even if it was just still in the workspace you would still have to work uh, write out game dot workspace dot dice one every time and if you wanted to change lots of properties of a dice say you wanted to change its color as well then you'd have to say the same thing again game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice dot dice two dot brick color equals brick color dot new uh, and we could say really red okay so you can see even though this works and it still goes red uh, you, you can you can tell that this is really really long and it's boring to have to write out every time you want to change a property now this is where variables come in uh, and a variable can be thought of kind of like uh, a shortcut okay a variable is used to uh, so let me show you it's used to hold some information so instead of saying die game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice all the time I could create a shortcut for that and I could say uh, I could make a variable for this dice and whenever I just said the name of that variable let's imagine we called it dice and um, it would uh, do the exact same thing as saying game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice okay and just to show you so to create a variable you have to say local first now uh, you can say it without local but it's good practice to always put local before your variables and I'll explain why in a future video so we say local and uh, then we give our, our variable a name so the name of this variable can be anything as long as you haven't uh, got a variable that's named the same thing so I'm gonna call my variable dice okay and so I've given it a name and now I need to give my dice a var variable a value okay so this dice name is going to be equal to a value it's going to hold some information so think of it of like a storage box and then you put the information inside of it okay so dice is equal to uh, game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice okay so instead of saying game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice we can now just say dice and if i copy this and i paste it instead of game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice every time okay uh, you can see that it has greatly shortened our code okay and we've only had to say uh, dice twice we haven't had to write out game dot workspace dot game parts dot dice every single time so now that we are using dice for these two lines I could change the contents of this variable and it would update for both of these lines I wouldn't have to update them uh, one by one but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on but let's test this out and see if it still works we should still have the same result and they should both be unanchored there we go they still get unanchored it works just as fine but we've saved ourselves from having to write out the same thing twice and that is what a variable is it's a shortcut 
because it holds information under a name and then we can use that name of that variable time and time again instead of having to write this instead of writing the same stuff out again and we can shorten this even more we could change our variable to be called dice1 and then we could just add dot dice1 onto the end of this and then we could copy and paste this variable for dice2 and just change the dice1 to dice2 and then instead of saying dice dot dice1 we could just say dice1 dot anchored equals false and dice2 dot anchored equals false we've referenced the two dice uh, once at the well uh, once for each dice at the top of our script we've made the variable and then later on we are basically uh, referencing the variable name which, so we're writing the variable name which substitutes for the contents of the variable so whenever this script goes to run it's going to look it's going to look up this variable that we've written and it's going to think of it as if it's replacing the name of the variable with the contents of the variable so although we've written dice one but there is no such thing as dice one in the game inside of game when it goes and looks for dice one as a service it's not going to find anything it knows that we've got a variable in our script and so it looks at this variable it sees that it's equal to game.workspace.gameparts.dice.dice1 and then it knows um, what we're talking about so we can just say dice one dot anchored equals false dice two dot anchored equals false and again the same thing happens we've got the same uh, action happening in the game but what we've done is we've shortened the amount of code that we have to write and again if we want to change more properties of the dice we don't have to write out the whole um, structure of having to reference it we can just say dice one dot brick color equals brick color dot new root red for example dice two dot brick color equals brick color dot new really blue As you can see that this is going to save time in the future when you want to keep referencing the same parts okay and uh, that's white because the, the decal background is is white and it, and it go and it overlaps the the blue if you're wondering um so that is a variable it lets you um save time if you're writing the same things out over and over again you can assign uh, values or content to a variable name and then use that name instead of having to to write the same stuff out again uh, and that was a very very brief introduction introduction to variables but we we've set our variables here to be objects the value of each variable here is an, is an object because we're saying dice one and dice two these are these are both objects um, you know because they're parts so um, a variable could be anything you could have a variable for the workspace so local workspace equals game dot workspace even though you, you you wouldn't really need a workspace variable because you can say workspace anyway um, that's like a roblox defined variable which the script already knows about um, but you could create a variable for other services so if you wanted to get replicated storage you could say uh, or lighting for example you could say local lighting equals game dot lighting okay so instead of having to say game dot lighting all the time in future you could just say lighting so that's one way variables can be used to save you time but as i said a variable doesn't always have to be an object or like a path to something a variable could also well it could be any data type and you know we have um, the four main data types in roblox we have uh, a string we have number um, we have a boolean value which can be true or it could be false um, what's the other data type oh yes uh, an object as well so game.workspace uh, dot camera for example that is an object so these are the four main data types okay uh, and a variable can be any of these so we could say local local text that could be the name of our variable and then we could set this text we could assign um, a, a string to it okay because a string data type is some text and inside of here we could write the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog okay and now i i think i've gone over this before the print uh, command if you don't know about it uh, print basically puts a message in the output so i could print hello there okay i could print hello run the game and it prints hello there don't worry about these errors by the way 
So that's what print does. Okay, what we could do is you could write the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, and that would print it out. We could print it out ten times. Okay, let's try this again. So you can see it prints out quick quick brown fox ten times. Um, and then what if you wanted to change the the text? Okay, or you made a spelling mistake in them all. Uh, you'd have to update them one by one, right, every time. But instead of doing that, you could say print text, and you could then print it out even more times. You could print it out 20 times if you wanted to, okay? And you're going to get the same output. If we run the game again, it's going to print the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And so it's printing this because it knows that text is a variable. If text wasn't a variable, then there would be an error because the text, it just prints nil, because the text isn't in uh, quote marks, because it's not a string. Okay, if it was a string, it would be it would be pink like that, but it's not. So what the variable does is when we go to print, it looks up this variable. Okay, we found the variable text. It's found that it's equal to the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And so it basically substitutes text with this string, okay, for all of them. So when you print text, it's going to print the value that is assigned to text. So again, if we clear the output and go again, it prints out the quick brown fox. And now, because we are using text every time and we're just printing out the contents of whatever the text uh, variable is, we can change uh, the text of this uh, variable. We could change it to hello once and then it's going to change it. Uh, well, it's going to print it out 20 times. You don't need to change uh, the print because you, you've only changed text once and then it will just look up text again uh, at the, the variable and it will see that text is equal to hello. So variables, they can be also used to store text like that. Um, probably not the best example, uh, but we will, come up, we will go over more uh, examples of where variables are used in the future like this. Uh, text can also be a uh, sorry. We can variables can also be a number, so we could call it my number equals thirty, and then you could print out what my number is. Okay, you could also say print print thirty, and that would do the same. But you could say print my number. But then if you change the my number variable, uh, it's going to print out whatever whatever it's equal to. So uh, it will look up what the variable is. Okay, it's set to 500, and it's going to print out 500 because we've assigned we've assigned 500 to this variable. Now you have to define a variable first before you print it or use it. So if we moved this print above uh, the when we define this variable, we're going to get an error because scripts. Okay, we got nil, and nil means nothing. Okay, because scripts um, they they run step by step. So the first command, the first line that it's going to execute is this print. But it's like, well, hold on, I don't know what my number is. You haven't defined it yet um, because we haven't got to that stage yet because we're defining it down here where we've got the local my number. And the equal sign tells us that we're setting it to, to something. So um, my number, let's move it back down. What we can also do is we can do um, mathematics on this number. So we could say print my number add 10. And that's going to look up what my number is. So it's going to be 500. It's going to take that number and I'm going to add 10 to it. So we should have 510. There we go, 510. So we can do all kinds of maths on the numbers. You could do a divide, 500 divided by 10, that's 50. There we go. And uh, you can see how um, you, you put the name of the variable, but it uh, substitutes it in pretty much. All right. And you may be wondering, well, why can't you just say 500 instead? Well, that's because variables are useful for when you're using the same number over and over again, okay? So say we had uh, another line that did my number and we wanted to add 50 to it. We could say my number equals my number add 50. So we're getting the current value of my number, which is 500, and then we're setting it to what it currently is, 500, with 50 added onto it. So it would become 550. And then we would be taking my number, which is now 550, because we added 50 to it here, and it's working in steps, and it's dividing it by 10. So we should get 55. There we go. So a variable would be useful when you wanted to store, well not store, keep a number, say in like temporary storage. 
So, for example, you could have um, the number of time left before a new game starts, and then you might keep you might keep subtracting one from it every second, and then you'll be able to check when my number has got down to zero. That's something that we'll be looking at in a future video. But what you should know is that uh, variables they used to store information. Well, not store. Um, more like hold information. Okay. Um, we can assign values to a variable name, and then instead of having to write out the same value again, or if you wanted to keep track of a certain value, um, we would use a variable. Now, if we didn't use a variable in this case, okay, uh, we got rid of the definition, and we said 500 equals, uh, and we just did 500 plus 50, okay, uh, and then we did uh, 550 divided by 10. You can see how. Actually, you can't see, but what I'm going to say is you can't keep track of a number as you go along. Um, you, you can't just say 500 plus 50. You have to use variables so that you can go in steps, if you know what I mean. Um, because with variables, you can firstly define it to be one number. You can do something to that same number and then, you know, do lots of different math calculations on it. And then you can get an end result. Um, and you can store that value as a variable and keep track of it, look it up, add to it, subtract to it, etc. Um, so that's what a variable is, it's kind of like a temporary store in your script. This video has gone on far longer than I would hoped for it to have gone on for, uh, and we haven't gone over variables fully yet, but just think of a variable as like a temporary store uh, of information that you need in your script, which you can use to save time. Okay, if you go back to the original example, uh, you can set it to an object, and you don't have to keep saying the reference to that object over and over again. So that was variables. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll probably make a second video on this. Leave any questions you have in the just in the comment section, uh, and uh, I'll also have another quiz in the description on variables, and probably some more videos covering it uh, again coming soon in the description. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more scripting videos. There'll be an Avon Blocks logo on your screen now with an arrow pointing to it. And also, the next video in this series is on screen now. You can see the thumbnail for it towards the right. Go ahead and click it, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.